I feel like I'm a very good judge of character at first instance. But I feel like I can grasp a, a hold of all relative information to like make a reasonable judgment. Well, I guess everyone likes to think that our government's run well and that, you know, the justice system works and is treated fairly. You have all these youth incarcerated for having some pot, yet rapists are being let out on parole, ha having not even spent half of their sentences, you know? That, that, that's not right. There's something wrong with that system. I feel it's quite corrupt. I just think it's a bit... Stuff. No one's born a killer, I don't think. You judge someone in one way one day and then judge them entirely differently the next day. There's a difference between a kill in self-defense and a kill that's been planned. I'd like to think on the grand scale that the justice system would be fair, um, but also you know, there's quite a lot of prejudice out there about you know sex and society and stuff. So, but I'd like on the whole, I'd like to, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, it's fair. And the truth always comes out in the end, right? The jury system is the backbone of any functioning justice system. Dating back as far as ancient Greece, juries have made judgments on an inconceivable number of cases. However, this begs the question, in the 21st century, are they always still fair? It's human nature to use your emotion when making decisions, but how does this fare when you're tasked with making an impartial decision that could completely change someone else's life? Ten people have been tasked with this job, a fabricated case with fabricated evidence which entirely reflects numerous cases seen in real life courtrooms every single day. How far will their empathy take them and will they make the right decision? On Friday the 17th of June, 2016, at 16.34 hours, Mark Kershaw killed his girlfriend, Kirsty Hill, with a blow from a large hammer to her right temple after an alleged argument. What, what do you think um, about the sort of nature of the crime by looking at that photo? Um, very violent. I mean, there's not really any thing that comes to mind other than this was a complete act of violence. I mean, to instantly go for a hammer is <laughs> someone's obviously wrong in the head to be doing that. Well, I don't really, do people really have hammers handy? Just like lying about? Just a bit weird, isn't it? Well, I mean, the kind of person would have a, to have a, to have a hammer in close proximity without having to go to some toolbox in some other part of your home, I guess, would be your person, so as we're someone who works in construction some way, would be a, a top of the list of people who... Um, but yeah, no, it's a interesting murder weapon, as it were, to um, to have close at hand, mm -hmm. you know? Um, not the first thing that you'd run and grab, you know, at, at, at short notice. That's quite brutal. Like... I suppose, like, I don't know if this makes sense, but like, it's easy to, like, poison someone or, like, to, I don't know, like, kill them in a way that you're not physically doing it. Like, if you're, like, to shoot someone or hit someone or hit them with a hammer, that is quite, like, full-on and personal and is quite, like, involved and really violent. It says more of that this could have, this is less of a planned attack than anything because it's something that you just grab. Mary Walton had claimed to have heard them fight on numerous occasions, although this one was particularly violent. She heard glasses being smashed and furniture being dragged around. She phoned the police because the arguments had lasted 45 minutes when they usually lasted 5 to 10 minutes. However, during the phone call to the dispatcher, the argument subsided and the neighbour expressed her belief that the argument had concluded. Dispatchers had told her to keep an eye on the situation and to phone back if anything escalated again. I'd say I completely agree, you know, with the, if it was a usual occurrence, you know, why she would not really think of anything else, that there was silence after it because it was only a, a usual argument and she seen the correlation with her 
life as well that she'd ar had arguments with her husband and it's a, usually a stereotypical thing of a couple, you know, no one doesn't goes along without arguing. And then and a, a strange occurrence is what the, um, you know, was what thought rather than this being something, oh, this was definitely building up to something. There was no, it wasn't like they argued every, it's not saying they argued every single day and the arguments got longer and longer and longer. And it's also not saying that this was a short scuffle where they're talking about someone dead, there was a definite, this is different from before, obviously, and it's, it's resolution and it's duration. I suppose, like, if they have had, like, previous arguments, but they haven't lasted that long, they might have just been, like, the average, like, argument. Like she says, like, everyone argues at times, but obviously if it's 45 minutes, that's, like, a serious argument. There must have been something big and some big reasoning behind that. So then that would like further suggest that's why like he would have murdered her, like on purpose. Um but then obviously when she says that it went quiet and like she just thought the argument had like just been finished with, obviously she must have been killed at that point. So it's quite it's quite like distressing to think that like she could have like helped if she'd known that maybe like the argument had led to that, but of course she would never know. Based on what's said here I mean, and the woman ended up dead, obviously, it seems like um, the man did it, if he's still in the apartment. However, there's no facts. You can't prove that here. Kershaw was a geography teacher at the local secondary school, while Hill was an art teacher. The pair had met when Hill had joined the school in 2012 and started a relationship two years later in 2014. The relationship was well known throughout the school. Joanna McGurn was aware of some issues between the pair and had called them in following a report from a pupil that he had heard an argument during school hours in Hill's classroom. She claims that the meeting discussed how it was inappropriate to bring their personal lives into their professional lives. Kershaw had been brought in previously because of a complaint from a parent that he had been intimidating to her child during a lesson. Kershaw had claimed that the child had been disrupting the class and thus he had joked about bringing back corporal punishment, but he issued a statement apologising for any offence he had caused. Okay, I'm mean, getting more references to, um, to Mr. Kershaw's um, violent, ten, or not violent, sorry, um, angry outbursts of, of shouting, not only towards um, Miss Hill, but also towards I'll be there obviously at the incident with the, the, the school kid, you know, um, whether in, in joking tendencies or not. Um, to reference back to corporal punishment is never a good sign. He's like intimidating kids and things and like pupils in this school. That could mean that like that is his personality. He's quite like an intimidating, like he just likes intimidating people. He's quite like aggressive. Um, but he's like trying to cover his own back so like by joking but obviously at this point it's got too far and you can't just laugh it off anymore. I think from gut reaction of what I'm seeing from this is that um, there was a dominance of Kershaw over Hill purely on the basis that, um, where did I read it? there was they were more subdued and it appeared to be the anger was still being brought out more on Kershaw's behalf you didn't really see Kirsty Hill acting out in this manner she was just more subdued which makes you think that Kershaw was the more aggressive person in the relationship I suppose you never know do you like what when couples are you never know because he could be the argumentative one, she could start something, there could be something going on, like... I just believe you don't know anyone's business. Also, when the head teacher came to Hill and asked what was going on, that she said everything was fine and didn't want to talk about it, could maybe state that either she just didn't want anyone to butt in on their relationship or she was uncomfortable with uh, Mr. Kershaw. That's what I get from this. Lying in the centre of the room was the body of Miss Kirsty Hill. There was a table overturned in the corner of the room and a glass smashed against the wall. On the floor next to the body lay a hammer with fresh blood and a clump of hair attached to the end. The body had major bruising on the right temple with lacerations stretching an inch across the forehead. 
The skull had been fractured in four locations on the right side. It is estimated that these injuries are a result of repeated blows to the head, upwards of nine times with the aforementioned hammer. A large bruise was also found on her right leg, but it was approximately five days old and deemed unrelated to the current incident. I mean, it doesn't show anything if it was planned or anything like that, but it seems it must have been something incredibly something that pushed him over the edge to the max because nine blows that's that's very gruesome i think it's not just someone snapping one time it shows that he probably was in some sort of rage for a long period of time it seems that struck upwards of, of nine times you know a clump of hair all of these seem like not and accidental is probably the, word, the wrong word to use but they're not lightly taken injuries you know if you're gonna hit someone with a hammer you gotta grab them by the hair um all of the, these things suggest a crime with passion behind it you know really wanting to inflict this form of of uh of damage. He was a lot more aggressive than Hill was just based on the information that you have. Um, the, the corporal punishment links with the fact that like, even as a joke that was something that was in the back of his mind so maybe reaching for a hammer wasn't a big deal in his head so it confirms that there is like an element of a psychopathy there that's not quite, something's not linking up in his head. Um, yeah, but that to me just confirms that he was the more violent one and that's likely led to him obviously taking a hammer to her head. I would say that it probably didn't turn abusive until the end or it hadn't been abusive like in the last like few weeks of like the relationship while she was alive. Um, because obviously they had no other injuries but there was the five day old bruise. So maybe like the end few weeks were quite intense for them both. They maybe had like other external factors going on um, or it could have just been like related to like their actual relationship and like how they've both been like dealing with things. Maybe he was abusive or something because like with the bruise but I suppose that could be anything but a large bruise on her right, right leg like he could have been violent previously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah he it's kind of adding up that he's kind of quite an aggressive person in general mm -hmm. and she doesn't um I don't know if she like maybe the overturned table and the smashed glasses like to try and maybe get away from him or something I'm not sure. Mark Kershaw claims that Kirsty Hill had been emotionally and physically abusing him over the course of their two-year relationship. He claims that she took advantage of his vulnerable mental health that he had developed because of the death of his parents when he was just 12 years old. Hill had sustained impact to her head from a hammer that Kershaw had picked up midway through the argument. He claimed she had threatened him with a knife the night before and he had been on edge ever since. She had thrown a glass at the wall during the argument and he had thought she was going to get more and more aggressive, so he picked up the hammer. The argument was a result of her threatening to expose him for something, but Kershaw would not reveal what she was blackmailing him about. I think if Mr. Kershaw was able to prove that she was blackmailing him and prove that there was something to be exposed and prove that she was playing on his mental health, then that would be a different story than things. He had pent up anger and he, 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 that, that. he got to a point, he, as he says himself, he got to a point where he couldn't take it anymore. Um, and I think, you know, the next thing would have to be a kind of a, an evaluation of. of of Mr. Kershaw's psyche and see where he stands. I would, I would actually believe it. However, there it causes doubt when it makes him sound very vulnerable in this statement, but his character from other people poses a completely different image that he was aggressive and wasn't in this vulnerable state as if Hill was in control of him. Um, but I like that could also be a front for being in an unsound mind state is like opposing this like aggressiveness to show that you're not weak. But I feel 
it doesn't add up the way he acted in school and in work hours of being this aggressive in comparison to his statement of it being like he was the one that was being abused. I suppose you never know, but like he could make all that up to try and get him a lesser sentence or, um, or it could be true. But... Lighter sentence, um, self-defense, um, it could be brought down to manslaughter. Um, there's there's a ton of things he could have in mind of, for for saying this. I think, um, but it's also I I can't say if it's true or not. It it might be completely possible that she was abusive. Like ties things up so it like obviously explains why the tools were there and the thing like the problems with his family and his mental state and how the, the, he'd been in an abusive relationship for over two years, which obviously could mess with you. That's why he's maybe got like a run like mental health problems and that could also be further taken with his family passing. Um and so with the tools being lying around the house, obviously that would just be like an object that's like easy to pick up and to use to like protect yourself and defend yourself. And obviously she wasn't caring if she'd pulled a knife on him. So if he was pulling out a hammer, that's like a similar situation that they've both been in. She's just obviously not acted upon that. So obviously with cases like this it would go to court and then it's up to jury systems all the way up and down the country to make the decision. Uh, this is slightly different obviously because he's admitted that he killed her. So what I'm asking you to do today is read through everything and I want you to decide whether it was murder or if it was justifiable. Yeah and he clearly is an argumentative person and from what's happened and I think that I think he was so angry that it would have just happened in anger anyway, but I don't think he, that's that's not a reason to kill someone, but I think that's why it happened, because he was angry and they were arguing and then he just did it. So I don't think you can justify it. I would say it would be a ploy to get out of more serious charges. Probably because there was no... Because there's the aggressive background coming from the workplace and the fact that the parents had no inkling of anything going on. It doesn't necessarily make it a completely, I wouldn't say it was like a hundred percent sure on that, but I would say it could possibly be applied to get out of, like get less charges based on I think based on the fact that, um, um, this was an argument that lasted longer than normal and uh, mainly the fact that she was struck in the head upwards of seven times and the um, the blackmailing that this was uh, not a just not a justifiable murder it was just murder there's part of me that thinks he is trying to get himself out of further charges and there's part of me that and if you're going to beat someone with a hammer nine times you're going to pull them by the hair, then you're not doing this and you're on self-defense and you're not doing this as something that she came at you so you swung a hammer. To hit, grab her by the hair and beat her nine times, that's a kind of passion and therefore I think that Mr. Kershaw is guilty. I think it was a murder. It's not justifiable. And he murdered. And he completely had the intent to do so. Not a justifiable murder. It was just murder. I think that the murder was self-defence. Um, I think that he was trying to protect himself because he'd been victimised over the past few years. And that he had been like targeted and like he'd been pushed to that stage like in relation to his mental health and the way he'd been treated by her. Um, and how He'd said that he was like scared for his own protection. I feel like naturally you would like maybe well maybe not like murder someone with a hammer, but I feel like naturally you would try to protect yourself to like any extent. The jury felt this was a very simple murder case. However, it goes a lot deeper than that. In the UK, 
13% of men have admitted to being victim to domestic abuse. However, this figure is likely to be a lot higher as only 10% have actually come forward to the police or medical professionals. This makes them three times as likely to stay silent than women who are in the exact same position. I read these facts and I couldn't understand why. Why were men so scared to come forward? So I wrote this case, filled with mental health issues, violence, but most importantly, psychological abuse. I kept it purposefully vague to allow the jury's mind to wander, and it confirmed my suspicion. People ran with his violent side, deemed him a murderer, and mostly overlooked his entire statement about being abused. The jury was far more susceptible to believing that he would make up these claims just to get out of more serious charges, with four out of five of the jury believing that he was a cold-blooded murderer. But this wasn't the case at all. This was a very simple story. A man victimised throughout the years, finally snapping. But this wasn't proof enough for me. So I had to make one final change. Mark Kershaw became Maria Kershaw, and Kirsty Hill became Kieran Hill. The exact same case, the exact same story, just with the genders reversed. And this was then presented to a new jury. I mean, I don't disbelieve it because it happened. It happens all the time, um, domestic abuse. My instincts are it's true and she's always been too scared to say anything about it. And that if you say in a courtroom that you felt that was the only way you had to escape and that he'd been emotionally abusive to you, the first thing you'd think is that's not going to do anything. You just thought, that's why I did it and I did it, but it's not going to actually affect anything. Um, I think what she's saying is very likely. Um, I think regarding like the other statements, um, for someone to be abusive, I think it is easier. It, like it's quite likely that they could hide that from other people. If what she's saying is true, then I think she has a right to feel resent towards him, to argue with him. I can see where it comes from. So perhaps. She, she didn't have the intent to kill him, but and it was just a, a self-defensive thing of worry. And then, I guess once maybe she hit him, you know, her anger did start to get out of being, you know, scared of this guy, um, especially if he was abusing her. I can definitely understand why she would do it. Um, if you are constantly scared for your life uh, every day for the two years and being emotionally and physically abused like that, that wears you down and if anyone would snap. Um, do I think murder is just like justifiable? No, like nothing can justify um, murder in my opinion, but she had snapped and, and he had been aggressive to her or uh, she was genuinely scared for her life and, and she just defended herself. Yeah, my instinct would be that it was self-defense because you don't hit someone nine times for them getting aggressive on you once. Not nine times. <laughs> I think it was self-defense. It's not like she just decided to kill him. Like there was obviously a build up to that, which where I think he was aggressive towards her. Um, like it wasn't pre-planned thing, obviously, they were already arguing and being aggressive. I'm leaning towards self-defense and that she didn't murder him. I believe that because she claimed that she has a mental condition which I think would Cause her to make decisions perhaps that were not quite logical or perhaps sway her into acting a specific way that would be considered incorrect. I would be more inclined to say that it would be murder on her part. The only evidence pointing towards that it wouldn't be murder on her part is her own statement and it's 
around half a steam and she didn't finish it and it's you know it's her word against I guess a dead man's these results were astounding four out of five of the jury said it was self-defense the polar opposite of what the last jury had said about the exact same case but society is changing more and more people are coming forward to expose their abusers and on the whole these cases are starting to fall however as a society we need to come together to make it far easier for people to come forward to share their abuse to get the guidance and support that they need regardless of their gender but I, I mean obviously people don't really when they hear about these things they're not kind of seeing it on a 100% fact like a factual sheet like this is and getting everything laid out for them it could be like you know misconstrued in like the newspapers or the way they'll hear it or they'll hear it from someone there is always this pull that says that in any domestic violence case the man is always one to blame and, and, and in many cases like we obviously see a lot of people say yes it was definitely obviously if it's if it's domestic abuse we assume it must be the guy hitting the, hitting the woman you know um, but I think that obviously in many cases it's not and I think there needs to be a societal change that looks at that and says domestic abuse can happen from, from women to men. If like if the male's been the victim but he's like acted on self-defense that's not like the like headline that's not on the front paper it's normally like about a woman being like victimized Um, I don't know if it's just the way because that's more popular to sell or if it's just more common that it is the female that's been victimised the whole way through the relationship. I think, I think people can abuse their partners no matter the gender. There are, there are things in place, there are people you can talk to and there's like, it's very much more open in terms of like society to come out and say, you know, I need help, I'm, you know, I'm being abused. Um, so that, you know, hopefully in future it'll be a very rare occasion that it ever gets to something as bad as this.